All I could see from where I stood was three long mountains and a wood. I turned and looked another way and saw three islands in a bay. So with my eyes I traced the line of the horizon, thin and fine, straight around till I was come back from where I'd started from. And all I saw from where I stood was three long mountains and a wood. Over these things I could not see. These were the things that bounded me, and I could touch them with my hand, almost, I thought, from where I stand. And all at once things seemed so small, my breath came short and scarce at all. But sure, the sky is big, I said, miles and miles above my head. So here upon my back I lie, and look my fill into the sky. And so I looked, and after all, the sky was not so very tall. The sky, I said, must somewhere stop. And sure enough, I see the top. The sky, I thought, is not so grand. I most could touch it with my hand, and reaching up my hand to try, I screamed to feel it touch the sky. I screamed, and lo, infinity came down and settled over me, forced back my scream into my chest, bent back my arm upon my breast, and, pressing of the undefined, the definition on my mind, held up before my eyes a glass through which my shrinking sight did pass until it seemed I must behold immensity made manifold whisper to me a word whose sound deafened the air for worlds around and brought unmuffled to my ears the gossiping of friendly spheres, the creaking of the tented sky, the ticking of eternity. I saw and heard and knew at last the how and why of all things past and present and forevermore. The universe, cleft to the core, lay open to my probing sense that, sickening, I would fain pluck thence, but could not. Nay, but needs must suck at the great wound and could not pluck my lips away till I had drawn all venom out. Ah, fearful pawn, for my omniscience paid I toll in infinite remorse of soul. All sin was of my sinning, all atoning mine, and mine the gall of all regret. Mine was the weight of every brooded wrong, the hate that stood behind each envious thrust, mine every greed, mine every lust. And all the while, for every grief, each suffering, I craved relief with individual desire, craved all in vain, and felt fierce fire about a thousand people crawl, perished with each, then mourned for all. A man was starving in Capri. He moved his eyes and looked at me. I felt his gaze, I heard his moan, and knew his hunger as my own. I saw at sea a great fog bank between two ships that struck and sank. A thousand screams the heaven smoke, and every scream tore through my throat. No hurt I did not feel, no death that was not mine. Mine each last breath that crying met an answering cry from the compassion that was I. All suffering mine, and mine its rod, Mine pity like the pity of God. Ah, awful weight, infinity pressed down upon the finite me. My anguished spirit, like a bird beating against my lips, I heard, yet lay the weight so close about there was no room for it without. And so beneath the weight lay I and suffered death, but could not die. Long had I lain thus, craving death, 
When quietly the earth beneath gave way, and inch by inch, so great, at last had grown the crushing weight, into the earth I sank till I full six feet underground did lie, and sank no more. There is no weight can follow here, however great. From off my breast I felt it roll, and as it went my tortured soul burst forth and fled in such a gust that all about me swirled the dust. Deep in the earth I rested now. Cool is its hand upon the brow and soft its breast beneath the head of one who is so gladly dead. And all at once and over all the pitying rain began to fall. I lay and heard each pattering hoof upon my lowly thatched roof and seemed to love the sound far more than ever I had done before. For rain it hath a friendly sound To one who's six feet underground And scarce the friendly voice or face A grave is such a quiet place The rain, I said, is kind to come and speak to me in my new home I would I were alive again to kiss the fingers of the rain To drink into my eyes the shine of every slanting silver line To catch the freshened fragrant breeze from drenched and dripping apple trees For soon the shower will be done And then the broad face of the sun will laugh above the rain-soaked earth Until the world with answering mirth shakes joyously and each round drop rolls twinkling from its glass blade top. How can I bear it buried here, while overhead the sky grows clear and blue again after the storm? O oh, multicolored, multiform, beloved beauty over me that I shall never, never see again. Spring silver, autumn gold, that I shall never more behold, sleeping your myriad magics through, close sepulchred away from you. O oh God, I cried, give me new birth and put me back upon the earth. Upset each cloud's gigantic gourd and let the heavy rain down poured in one big torrent set me free, washing my grave away from me. I ceased. And through the breathless hush that answered me, the far-off rush of herald wings came whispering like music down the vibrant string of my ascending prayer. And crash, before the wild wind's whistling lash, the startled storm clouds reared on high and plunged in terror down the sky. And the big rain in one black wave fell from the sky and struck my grave. I know not how such things can be. I only know there came to me a fragrance such as never clings to aught save happy living things. A sound as of some joyous elf singing sweet songs to please himself. And through and over everything a sense of glad awakening. The grass a tiptoe at my ear whispering to me I could hear. I felt the rain's cool fingertips brushed tenderly across my lips, laid gently on my sealed sight. And all at once the heavy night fell from my eyes and I could see a drenched and dripping apple tree, a last long line of silver rain, a sky grown clear and blue again. And as I looked, a quickening gust of wind blew up to me and thrust into my face a miracle of orchard breath. And with the smell, I know not how such things can be, I breathed my soul back into me. Ah, up then from the ground sprang I and hailed the earth with such a cry as is not heard save from a man who has been dead and lives again. About the trees my arms I wound, like one gone mad I hugged the ground. I raised my quivering arms on high, I laughed and laughed into the sky, till at my throat a strangling sob caught fiercely, 
and a great heart throb sent instant tears into my eyes. O oh God, I cried, no dark disguise can e'er hereafter hide from me thy radiant identity. Thou canst not move across the grass, but my quick eyes will see thee pass, nor speak however silently, but my hushed voice will answer thee. I know the path that tells thy way through the cool eve of every day. God, I can push the grass apart and lay my finger on thy heart. The world stands out on either side, no wider than the heart is wide. Above the world is stretched the sky, no higher than the soul is high. The heart can push the sea and land farther away on either hand. The soul can split the sky in two and let the face of God shine through. But east and west will pinch the heart that cannot keep them pushed apart. And he whose soul is flat, the sky will cave in on him by and by. Not in this chamber only at my birth, when the long hours of that mysterious night were over and the morning was in sight, I cried. But in strange places, step and firth I have not seen, through alien grief and mirth, and never shall one room contain me quite, who in so many rooms first saw the light. Child of all mothers, native of the earth, so is no warmth for me at any fire today when the world's fire has burned so low. I kneel, spending my breath in vain desire at that cold hearth which one time roared so strong and straighten back in weariness and long to gather up my little gods and go. Love is not all. It is not meat, nor drink, nor slumber, nor a roof against the rain, nor yet a floating spar to men that sink and rise and sink and rise and sink again. Love cannot fill the thickened lung with breath, nor clean the blood, nor set the fractured bone. Yet many a man is making friends with death, even as I speak, for lack of love alone. It well may be that in a difficult hour, pinned down by pain and moaning for release, or nagged by want past resolution's power, I might be driven to sell your love for peace, or trade the memory of this night for food. It well may be. I do not think I would. Thou art not lovelier than lilacs, no, nor honeysuckle. Thou art not more fair than small, white, single poppies. I can bear thy beauty, though I bend before thee, though from left to right, not knowing where to go, I turn my troubled eyes, nor here nor there find any refuge from thee. Yet I swear, so has it been with mist, with moonlight so. Like him who, day by day, unto his draught of delicate poison, adds him one drop more, till he may drink unharmed the death of ten. Even so, inured to beauty, who have quaffed each hour more deeply than the hour before, I drink and live what has destroyed some men. Oh, think not I am faithful to a vow, Faithless am I, save to love self alone. Were you not lovely, I would leave you now. After the feet of beauty fly my own. Were you not still my hunger's rarest food, and water ever to my wildest thirst, I would desert you. Think not but I would, and seek another as I sought you first. But you are mobile as the veering air, and all your charms more changeful than the tide, Wherefore, to be inconstant is no care. I have but to continue at your side. 
So wanton, light, and false, my love, are you. I am most faithless when I most am true. I know I am but summer to your heart, and not the full four seasons of the year. And you must welcome from another part such noble moods as are not mine, my dear. No gracious weight of golden fruits to sell have I, nor any wise and wintry thing. And I have loved you all too long and well to carry still the high, sweet breast of spring. Wherefore, I say, O oh love, as summer goes, I must be gone. Steal forth with silent drums that you may hail anew the bird and rose when I come back to you as summer comes. Else will you seek at some not distant time even your summer in another clime. Mindful of you, the sodden earth in spring and all the flowers that in the springtime grow and dusty roads and thistles and the slow rising of the round moon, all throats that sing the summer through, and each departing wing, and all the nests that the bared branches show, and all the winds that in any weather blow, and all the storms that the four seasons bring. You go no more on your exultant feet up paths that only mist and morning knew, or watch the wind, or listen to the beat of a bird's wings too high in air to view. But you are something more than young and sweet and fair, and the long year remembers you. Now by the path I climbed, I journey back. The oaks have grown. I have been long away. Taking with me your memory and your lack, I now descend into a milder day. Stripped of your love, unburdened of my hope, descend the path I mounted from the plain. Yet steeper than I fancied seems the slope, and stonier now that I go down again. Warm falls the dusk, the clanking of a bell faintly ascends upon this heavier air. I do recall those grassy pastures well, in early spring they drove the cattle there, and close at hand should be a shelter too, from which the mountain peaks are not in view. The trees along this city street, save for the traffic and the trains, would make a sound as thin and sweet as trees in country lanes. And people standing in their shade out of a shower undoubtedly would hear such music as is made upon a country tree. O oh, little leaves that are so dumb against the shrieking city air, I watch you when the wind has come. I know what sound is there. I had forgotten how the frogs must sound after a year of silence, else I think I should not so have ventured forth alone at dusk upon this unfrequented road. I am waylaid by beauty. Who will walk between me and the crying of the frogs? O oh, savage beauty, suffer me to pass that I am a timid woman on her way from one house to another. I looked in my heart while the wild swans went over, and what did I see I had not seen before? Only a question less or a question more. Nothing to match the flight of wild birds flying. Tiresome heart, forever living and dying, house without air, I leave you and lock your door. Wild swans, come over the town, come over the town again, trailing your legs and crying. Oh, lay my ashes on the wind that blows across the sea, and I shall meet a fisherman out of Capri, and he will say, seeing me, what a strange thing, like a fish's scale or a butterfly's wing. 
Oh, lay my ashes on the wind that blows away the fog, and I shall meet a farmer boy leaping through the bog, and he will say, seeing me, What a strange thing, like a peat ash or a butterfly's wing. And I shall blow to your house, and sucked against the pane, see you take your sewing up and lay it down again, and you will say, seeing me, what a strange thing, like a plum petal or a butterfly's wing. And none at all will know me that knew me well before, but I will settle at the root that climbs about your door, and fishermen and farmers may see me and forget, but I'll be a bitter berry in your brewing yet. The storm is over, and the land has forgotten the storm. The trees are still. Under this sun, the rain dries quickly. Cones from the sea pines cover the ground again, where yesterday for my fire I gathered all in sight. But the leaves are meek. The smell of the small alyssum that grows wild here is in the air. It is a childish morning. More sea than land am I. My sulky mind, whipped high by tempest in the night, is not so soon appeased. Into my occupations, with dull roar, it washes, it recedes. Even as at my side, in the calm day, the disturbed Mediterranean lurches with heavy swell against the bird-twittering shore. Moon, that against the lintel of the west, your forehead lean until the gate be swung, longing to leave the world and be at rest, being worn with faring and no longer young. Do you recall at all the Carrion Hill, where, worn with loving, loving late you lay, halting the sun because you lingered still, while wandering candles lit the Carrion Day? Ah, if indeed this memory to your mind recalls some sweet employment, pity me, that with the dawn must leave my love behind, that even now the dawn's dim herald see. I charge you, goddess, in the name of one you loved as well, endure, hold off the sun. Let you not say of me when I am old, in pretty worship of my withered hands, forgetting who I am, and how the sands of such a life as mine run red and gold, even to the ultimate sifting dust. Behold, here walketh passionless age, for there expands a curious superstition in these lands, and by its leave some weightless tales are told. In me no Lenten wicks watch out the night. I am the booth where folly holds her fair, Impious no less in ruin than in strength, when I lie crumbled to the earth at length. Let you not say, upon this reverent sight, the righteous groaned and beat their breasts in prayer. If I could have two things in one, the peace of the grave and the light of the sun, my hands across my thin breast bone, but aware of the moss invading the stone, aware of the flight of the golden flicker with his wing to the light, to hear him nicker and drum with his bill on the rotted willow, snug and still on a grey pillow, deep in the clay where digging is hard, out of the way the blue shard of a broken platter, if I might be in sensate matter, with sensate me sitting within, harking and prying, I might begin to dicker with dying. For the body at best is a bundle of aches, longing for rest. It cries when it wakes, alas, tis light, at set of sun, alas, tis night, and nothing done. Death, however, is a spongy wall, is a sticky river, is nothing at all. Summon the weeper, wail and sing. Call him reaper, angel, king. Call him evil, drunk to the lees, monster, devil. 
he is less than these. Call him thief, the maggot in the cheese, the canker in the leaf. He is less than these. Dusk without sound, where the spirit by pain uncoiled is wound to spring again. The mind enmeshed laid straight in repose, and the body refreshed by feeding the rose. These are but visions. These would be the grave's derisions, could the grave see. Here is the wish of one that died like a beached fish on the ebb of the tide, that he might wait till the tide came back to see if a crate or a bottle or a black boot or an oar or an orange peel be washed ashore. About his heel the sand slips. The last he hears from the world's lips is the sand in his ears. What thing is little, the aphis hid in a house of spittle, the hinge of the lid of the spider's eye at the spider's birth? Greater am I by the earth's girth than mighty death. All creatures cry that can summon breath and speak no lie. For he is nothing, he is less than echo answering nothingness. Less than the heat of the furthest star to the ripening wheat, less by far when all the lipping is said and sung than the sweat dripping from a dog's tongue. This being so, and I being such, I would liefer go on a cripple's crutch, lopped and felled, liefer be dependent on a chair propelled by a surly attendant with a foul breath, and be spooned my food, then go with death where nothing good, not even the thrust of the summer gnat, consoles the dust for being that. Needy, lonely, stitched by pain, left with only the drip of the rain, out of all I had, the books of the wise badly read by other eyes, lewdly bawled at my closing ear, hated, called a lingerer here, withstanding death till life be gone, I shall treasure my breath, I shall linger on. I shall bolt my door with a bolt and a cable. I shall block my door with a bureau and a table. With all my might, my door shall be barred. I shall put up a fight. I shall take it hard. With his hand on my mouth, he shall drag me forth, shrieking to the south and clutching at the north. To what purpose, April, do you return again? Beauty is not enough. You can no longer quiet me with the redness of little leaves opening stickily. I know what I know. The sun is hot on my neck as I observe the spikes of the crocus. The smell of the earth is good. It is apparent that there is no death. But what does that signify? Not only underground are the brains of men eaten by maggots. Life in itself is nothing, an empty cup, a flight of uncarpeted stairs. It is not enough that yearly down this hill, April comes like an idiot, babbling and strewing flowers. Where can the heart be hidden in the ground and be at peace, and be at peace forever? under the world, untroubled by the sound of mortal tears that cease from pouring never. Well for the heart by stern compassion harried, if death be deeper than the churchmen say. Gone from this world indeed what's graveward carried, and laid to rest indeed what's laid away. Anguish enough while yet the indignant breather have blood to spurt upon the oppressor's hand. Who would eternal be and hang in ether a stuffless ghost above his struggling land, retching in vain to render up the groan that is not there, being aching dusts alone? I would to God I were quenched and fed as in my youth from the flask of song and the good bread of beauty richer than truth. The anguish of the world is on my tongue. My bowl is filled to the brim with it. There is more than I can eat. Happy are the toothless old and the toothless young that cannot rend this meat.
The angry nettle and the mild grew together under the blue plum trees. I could not tell as a child which was my friend of these. Always the angry nettle in the skirt of his sister caught my wrist that reached over the ground, where alike I gathered, for the one was sweet and the other wore a frosty dust, the broken plum and the sound. The plum trees are barren now, and the black knot is upon them that stood so white in the spring. I would give to recall the sweetness and the frost of the lost blue plums, anything, anything. I thrust my arm among the gray, ambiguous nettles and wait, but they do not sting. The rush of rain against the glass is louder than my noisy mind crying, alas. The rain shouts, hear me, how I melt the ice that clamps the bent and frozen grass. Winter cannot come twice, even this year. I break it up. I make it water the roots of spring. I am the harsh beginning, poured in torrents down the hills, and dripping from the trees, and soaking later, and when the wind is still, into the roots of flowers, which your eyes, incredulous, soon will suddenly find, comfort is almost here. The sap goes up the maple, it drips fast from the tapped maple into the tin pail through tubes of hollow elder. The pails brim, birds with scarlet throats and yellow bellies sip from the pails brim. Snow falls thick. It is sifted through cracks about windows and under doors. It is drifted through hedges into country roads. It cannot last. Winter is past. It is hurling back at us boasts of no avail. But spring is wise. Pale and with gentle eyes. One day somewhat she advances. The next, with a flurry of snow into flake-filled skies, retreats before the heat in our eyes. And the thing designed by the sick and longing mind in its lonely fancies, the sally which would force her and take her. And spring is kind. Should she come running headlong in a wind-whipped acre of daffodil skirts down the mountain into this dark valley, we would go blind. Beautiful Parsi woman in your pale silk veil with the gold border, why do you watch the sky? The sky is thick and cloudy with the bold, strong wings of the vulture that shall tear your breast and thigh on the tall tower of silence where you at length must lie. Ah, but have not I, I too at the end of the northern May, when the pasture slope was pink with a wild azalea and fragrant with its breath, touched the brown, treacherous earth with my living hand, thrown me prone on my own green coffin lid, and smiled at the grass and had no thought of death. You there with a tranquil, lovely brow, what do you see so high? Some beautiful thing, the sun on the vulture's wing. What rider spurs him from the darkening east as from a forest, and with rapid pound of hooves, now light, now louder on hard ground, approaches and rides past with speed increased, dark spots and flecks of foam upon his beast? What shouts he from the saddle, turning round as he rides on? Greetings, I made the sound. Greetings from Nineveh, it seemed at least. Did someone catch the object that he flung? He held some object on his saddle bow and flung it towards us as he passed. Among the children then it fell, most likely. No, tis here. A little bell without a tongue. Listen, it has a faint voice, even so. Now sits the autumn cricket in the grass, 
And on the gravel crawls the chilly bee. Near to its close, and none too soon for me, draws the dull year, in which has come to pass the changing of the happy child I was into this quiet creature people see, stitching a seam with careful industry to deaden you who died on Michaelmas. Ages ago, the purple aconite laid its dark hoods about it on the ground, and roses budded small and were content. Swallows are south long since and out of sight. With you, the flocks and asters also went. Nor can my laughter anywhere be found. 